how to create this joiner, cubist, collage-like effect in a Finzi photo, PC or Mac. In a previous video, I said you couldn't use macros. It's not strictly true. You can use macros. Makes it a lot quicker to create this effect. So with this image, I'm just gonna unlock it and I'm just gonna copy it. So it's selected and copy. Don't need it anymore, so just delete it. Now I could create any number of shapes. I'm just gonna go with a rectangle, perfectly reasonable, but all kinds of different designs. Now you might like to use a different color instead of white, but you can use white, you can use green, doesn't matter. It's gonna be filled with that image. And you can apply this multiple times. So just create loads and loads of rectangles or any other shape, star designs, circular designs. And you maybe want to create lots and lots of them right in the center. And also you can create some edge, maybe different size. And you of course could have a hundred of these. Now the more layers you have, create this and you can create many size. You maybe go for thin, go that way and so on. Now you can build up this sort of design. Well, once you've done that, I'm just gonna go down here to the bottom and then what I can do is I can then paste inside. So I'm just gonna paste what I copied earlier. So edit and paste inside. And you can see now I've got that inside there. But you could do that with all of them. But what you can do is use a macro. So now what I can do, I can just record. So here's the macro, you can find that in the window menu or view and studio if you're using version one. So click here to record. So start recording. Now what you want to do is go to this, the rectangle. Just go upwards and it'll pop up with this. Now this is something I thought with the select menu you could do, but macros seem to reject those. But you can select the parent layer and that's what you need to do. So select and then once you've done that, cancel. So you can see now I've got that. Well, what I want to next do is select the one above. In the moment, it's got nothing in it, but I'm going to fill it with the same image. So I'm just going to go up here, click there, and then it will come up with this. Select layer one above current. And you can also, of course, see other options here. So select, and now use paste inside. So paste inside. So you paste it inside again. And each time you paste that, picture, it will always be nicely aligned to the photo you had before at this start point. Now, stop the recording the macro, I don't need it anymore, the recording, but now what I can do is I can now play. And you can see it's on the background. That's the key thing. Don't move it from that, otherwise that's gonna confuse things. But what you can then do, just play. And as you do that, it will then rapidly fill up all those. Now there might be another way of doing this. I'm certain, please put in the comments if you know of another way of doing this, but you can see what happens. It generates all these images placed into those rectangles. You don't have to fill them all with, of course, the same image. You could use different images, perfectly reasonable. And make certain you do them all. If you want, leave some, I think that's it. Yep, they've all been filled. So now you've got this, you don't need the macro anymore. So let's just remove that. And with this, what you can do is you can go here, use the move tool, not the hand tool, but move tool and select any of these things. And you might want to say, like go into the center, the center ones. You might decide, well, the center one, I've got that rectangle there. Now go and select the background for that rectangle. So background, and then you can shift it. So you just shift it just like that. Just move it or maybe resize it. And you might like to obviously resize, use the navigator to resize the image and then you can go to another one so let's just go to another one there and again you've got exactly the same so go to the background and then shift that and then go maybe to another one you can select now you can select them from here in the layers but you might decide you know i want to select that one again go to the background and you can then shift it and you can just move them all and you could obviously create maybe multiple ones in the center so select that one and then again go to the background and just reposition it so you get the car in there. Maybe resize it a bit so you can see you can build it up and create all kinds of slight variations from that image. And again select another one 
And of course, you can always resize this. You don't have to keep it. You might think, oh, you know what? I made the wrong size there. I can always resize that. Resize that. And you can see, of course, what it does, it resizes the whole thing, which you may or may not want. But it creates an interesting design as well. And you can reposition that. And again, go here to the background and shift that around. And again, just move it there. And so on. You can literally build up all kinds of different designs. And not only that, you can also rotate it. So if you select that background, Game Move Tool, should be able to rotate it. You know where the controls are. Oh, there they are. Right at the top. It's quite a big. See, once you get that, you can just slightly shift it. So you might want to resize it like that. Maybe you decide, you know what, around this edge. Let's select around the edge. And you might decide, you know, you want some more. So you can... Obviously, create some more rectangles if you want, and then just fill them, of course, paste inside very quickly. You don't have to use the macro, of course. But the macro just does make it easier. And again, make sure the background's there, and then you can drag this and resize this one. And you can see then you can build up all kinds of unusual designs. But also what you can do, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a selection feature, so you can select all of them, but there, just select them all. You can just drag over them as well. Sometimes not always easy unless you zoomed. So with those all selected, now what you can do is you can go to Effects. So click there, and you might decide, you know what, have 3D. So 3D, set the radius, and you can create that kind of effect. You may not want that. You may want maybe Inner Shadow. So Inner Shadow, just create an Inner Shadow effect. And it's repeated for all of them. You, of course, don't have to select them all. Maybe some you could have Inner Shadow, some... Out of shadow. Maybe you don't want that one, you want just out of shadow. So out of shadow and just increase that, that, and close. And you can see you can build up that kind of design. And again, you can still go to any of these individual ones and rotate that rectangle and slow so on. Or reposition it. Don't have to have it exactly in the same place. So you want this one. So this one, make certain you select the background. You don't want to blur unless you want to blur it, of course. But you can then, of course, go to filter. Maybe go down to blur, Gaussian blur. Just blur it slightly. Don't have to have it like that. Or maybe use filter and distort and deform or twirl. All kinds of different effects can be applied as well. Or maybe filter, distort and mesh warp. That's another option. And of course, another option, if you want, you can always select all of them and then just paste in them again on top of the existing ones then manipulate those as well independently to create even more layers of complexity in your design. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Thank you much.